Number 10, Caleb Beasley. Caleb is listed as six feet tall, 185 pounds. He's a cornerback out of Lipscomb Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. I actually think he's taller than the six feet that he's listed at. I think he's closer to about 6'1", almost 6'2". He's got a really long torso, and he's got those short, explosive strides that you want in your secondary players. It pays off well for him because he's really good in and out of his breaks. He's got great hips, long arms, literally prototype for what you would expect a cornerback to be. I think he's got a chance to be an NFL player as well. Something else that I love about his game is that he's extremely versatile. I think he could play cornerback, star, or either safety position for our team. But the biggest thing that I love about watching him on film is that the ball just seems to find him all the time. He's just got a magnet inside of his hands and he's got several interceptions at the high school level. I don't think that that's gonna change in college because some people just have that it factor about him where the ball just tends to find them. He does a great job, whether he's playing in zone coverage or playing in man, but most of the interceptions that we're seeing, it looks like he's playing in a deeper zone. So that kind of leads me to believe, hey, he could end up playing safety for Tennessee. He may end up having more upside there, but even if he's gonna be playing corner, again, he can play man-to-man -man coverage. He could play bump and run coverage, and he's the son of a coach. So everything that he does from a fundamental perspective is really, really sound. And I think he's gonna have a great career at the University of Tennessee. I would not be surprised to see him get some rotation as a true freshman somewhere in that secondary. Number nine, Kellen Lindstrom. Kellen is listed at six foot five, 235 pounds. He's a defensive end from Glendale High School in Springfield, Missouri. He saw a huge bump in his ratings towards the end of this cycle because he is that good. Now, when we first broke down his film, that's the same thing that we said. He's underrated as a player and he's a strong side defensive end prototype listed at 235, but I think that he could very easily end up being 250 by the start of the season and being even more explosive and even stronger. That's one of the things that I really love about watching this film is number one, boom, he gets off the ball very quickly and he's got those long, powerful arms. He's able to disengage with blockers with ease. He's a guy that's coming into a team that's got a very deep defensive line room, but I still wouldn't be surprised to see him get a pretty solid amount of playing time as a true freshman. I think that he's that good. Number eight, Edwin Spillman. Edwin is listed at six foot two, 214 pounds. He's a linebacker also out of Lipscomb Academy in Nashville, Tennessee. He is the younger brother of Nate Spillman, who's a wide receiver already at the University of Tennessee. So he already knows what the expectations will be from this staff. Number one thing that jumps off to me on his film is that he's mean, he's nasty, he loves contact. We also saw in the Polynesian Bowl, him kind of getting into some personal battles with some guys and throwing some bodies late after the whistle. Now, some people might think that that's a bad thing, but I like players with that edge. I think it's necessary, especially playing Mike at the SEC level. He's sideline to sideline, he shows really good speed, great burst, and you can tell that he's very well coached. Also plays with great fundamentals, very similar to what we see out of Caleb Beasley. Now. Can he play in coverage? Can he play inside and outside linebacker? I think so. I think he could do it at a pretty high level. And as far as in pass coverage, that's something that he will continue to need to work on. But if we're just talking about see ball, get ball, playing linebacker from that standpoint, he's absolutely one of the best in this country. I think he's still underrated as a player. And I know that he'll get some playing time on special teams for our Vols as a true freshman, but also think he has a good chance to get into the linebacker rotation as a true freshman as well. He's gonna be a fan favorite for years to come. Reminds me a lot of Al Wilson, just in the tenacity that he plays this game with. And obviously Al Wilson will be there to coach him up some and mentor him. I think that the future is very bright for Edwin Spillman. Number seven, William Satterwhite. William is listed at six foot three, 300 pounds out of Archbishop Hoban in Akron, Ohio. He's an interior offensive lineman, and I think he's probably gonna end up playing center for our volunteers. Now, whenever you look at him on film, he looks a little bit on the shorter side, but what I love about him is his fundamentals. I think that he could be the most fundamentally sound offensive lineman that this staff has maybe recruited since they've been here. Everything he does is beautiful, great hand placement, great feet, beautiful center of gravity plays with tremendous leverage and he's a dog just like all the other offensive linemen that are coming in this class you can tell that he takes great pride in bullying people and pushing them around now i also think that he could play guard if need be and just for this season coming up obviously if he is slotted to be playing center for us he's going to be sitting behind cooper mays but as a sophomore i think that he will earn a starting spot either at center or at guard and it's probably going to be at center 
I think that he has a chance to be an even better center than Cooper Mays was for us throughout his tenure at the University of Tennessee. I'm very much looking forward to seeing William Satterwhite go to work this spring and in the fall. Number six, Jake Merklinger. Jake is listed at six foot three, 195 pounds out of Calvary Day High School in Savannah, Georgia. I love his film. I love his game. Now he did take a big drop in the rankings and I'm not quite sure why we talked about this in a previous video that his numbers increased from his junior to his senior seasons. So again, it's kind of mind boggling that he dropped. There's a lot of politics involved with this stuff, but watching his film, you can tell he can make all of the throws, whether it's in the pocket or whether it's on the run, moving to his right, to his left, moving towards the line of scrimmage under duress. It doesn't matter. He's very accurate and he throws a very catchable ball. He has great touch and anticipation in throwing passes. I think that he fits into this offensive scheme beautifully because he does have that strong NFL type of an arm and he's also mobile, okay? We're not just talking about being mobile to throw, but he's mobile to actually run. I think that we could see some read options with Jake Merklinger, and I think that he'll run them very, very well. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing him grow as a young quarterback in our system up under Coach Heupel. Now, obviously with Nico being here for another two seasons, we are anticipating that Jake will probably be right there behind him. And I think even as a true freshman, I think that he'll end up being quarterback number two. If we ever get into a bond, I do think that he's physically capable of making the offense work. Very similar to what Nico does. But biggest question for me is, will he be ready for that moment if that opportunity comes? And hopefully it never does. But once Nico does go on to the NFL, he will be right there to take over the reins of this offense. And I don't think he's going to miss much of a beat from Nico. Now, obviously, we also have George McIntyre coming in in the 2025 class. But I think that that's going to be a very good battle right now. I'm still going to be leaning more towards Jake because he will have had one extra year in the system and he is a phenomenal football player. I think that he's in the same class with Nico and with GMAC. And I feel like we are very, very blessed with the quarterback situation that we have right now and what we're going to end up having moving forward at Tennessee. Number five, Boo Carter. Boo was listed as a 5'10", 184-pound athlete out of Bradley Central in Cleveland, Tennessee. He's already a fan favorite. He's already a favorite amongst his peers. Very, very popular. I think he's going to do very well for himself long after football because he's got that Hollywood type of a personality, kind of similar to a prom time. And he also plays very similar to a prom time. Offense, defense, special teams. He can literally do it all. I actually like his upside a lot more on offense, but he has been working on the defensive side of the ball since he's been on campus at Tennessee. And so far, everyone has a lot of good things to say about Boo Carter. Now, we are anticipating that he's gonna get a strong look to play the star position for us this season, okay? But I also think that he could play corner at a high level. Whenever you look at his skill set, he's got really good feet, okay? He's great in and out of his breaks. He's got really good hips, and obviously he's got great hands. So I definitely think that he could play at a high level in the secondary. But like I just said, I like him a lot more on offense and I hope that Coach Hyper will put some packages in for him this season. We will see him on special teams as well as a punt returner and or as a kick returner. I think that he can be a tremendous playmaker from that perspective as well. And I think he's a day one star at the University of Tennessee. Definitely gonna be a special player for us moving forward. And I absolutely cannot wait to see him go to work in spring and fall camp. Number four, Peyton Lewis. Peyton is listed at six foot one, 197 pounds. He's a running back out of Salem High School in Salem, Virginia, and he's the absolute and total truth. Now, I did have him as one of the guys that would work into that three back rotation, but he is going to be missing spring practice. We'll see if he can gain that ground back in the fall. But whenever you watch him run that football, it is an absolute work of art. Bigger body guy, but also a track guy. I believe he's a state champion. And Peyton has what I would call prototype size for an NFL running back, especially by the time that he's done filling out in college. He's probably going to be closer to about six foot one, 230 pounds. Very similar to like an Arian Foster. I think he looks a lot like him in the way that he runs. And Arian is one of my favorite Tennessee running backs. Very, very smooth, great anticipation, shows a whole lot of patience, has great balance beautiful burst, keeps his legs churning, okay? He will run through tackles, he'll stiff arm you, whatever it takes. He can also catch the football out of the backfield. He's a guy that you could line up out wide and let him play a little bit of wide receiver. 
very similar to a Cam Seldon type. Now, I honestly think that Cam Seldon and Peyton Lewis will probably end up being the best two backs on this team this season. Dylan Sampson is a very good running back, but he's a little bit on the smaller side. And we've seen him give up several blitzing linebackers or, you know, miss some blocks. So that's a big concern for me. But I am, you know, obviously wishing Dylan Sampson all the best. I'm just saying that at the end of the day, I think that Peyton Lewis is probably going to be one of the better backs from day one on this roster. And I would not be surprised to see him work in a lot as a true freshman. Number three, Braylon Staley. Braylon is a six feet tall, 180 pound wide receiver out of Strom Thurmond High School in Johnston, South Carolina. He's a dog, okay? He's everything that you would want in a wide receiver. He's got the speed, he's got the quickness, he has great hands. Constantly seeing him mossing people, going up, high pointing that football. You could tell that he's a football player, very dynamic with the ball in his hands, and he's tough, he's physical. Kind of puts me in the mind of a smaller, Brew McCoy, okay? You could also maybe compare him a little bit to like a Joy Kent and just how smooth he looks moving through everything. But he's also very, very explosive. He just plays with a different type of fierceness that we haven't seen at the University of Tennessee at the wide receiver position, you know, obviously outside of Brew or, you know, maybe like a Jawan Jennings in just too long, okay? We used to have those types of guys all the time. Talk about the, you know, Meachams, talk about the Jason Swains, all those guys. You know, we used to have a bunch of them, and now I'm loving the fact that Tennessee is getting in more and more of these caliber of players. Very, very underrated, for sure. He's a top 20 type of talent in this class. Do not be mistaken. And I would love to see him get some rotation in our system as a true freshman. I'm just not sure if that's going to happen with the way that we've been rotating, you know, in previous seasons up under Josh Heupel. But he's definitely capable of coming in, I think, and being a playmaker from day one just because he's such a dog. Absolutely love Braylon Staley, and that's why we've got him at number three. Number two, Mike Matthews. Mike is listed as a six foot, 180 pound wide receiver out of Parkview High School in Lilburn, Georgia. And he's very similar to a Braylon Staley, okay? They're both very explosive athletes. The difference though, I would say is that maybe Mike Matthews looks a little bit smoother, okay? Not to say that Braylon ain't smooth, but Mike just looks a little bit smoother. I think he's very deceptively smooth. He may even kind of look slow to some people, but he's a true 4-4-4-3 guy. He's one of the fastest players in the entire country. And we saw him perform very well at the Polynesian Bowl and at other all-star games. We're seeing him in practice, jumping up, making spectacular catches, mossing people. He's a great basketball player too. He also plays safety in high school. And I think that he could play safety in college as well. He's just a very, very versatile athlete. He's got very, very strong hands. And again, man, runs very smooth routes. You could tell that he's very well versed in the route tree. Comes from a great program at Parkview. We know that he's very well coached and he's just a football player. He's just a dog. I'm absolutely guaranteeing you that he's going to make a ton of plays at the University of Tennessee. Again, just like Braylon Staley, I'm hoping that he can find a way to work into the rotation with the wide receivers as a true freshman because he's good enough to come out and play with SCC level players from day one. Number one, Jordan Ross. Jordan is listed as a six foot five, 233 pound defensive end out of Vestibia Hills in Birmingham, Alabama. Jordan is a guy that whenever we first did his film breakdown, the first player that we compared him to was James Pierce because I think that that's how good of a player he is. Long arms, okay, explosive off of the line of scrimmage, strong, plays with the mean streak. He's got a very high motor, does a great job in run support, but we all know that he can get to that passer. And a lot of times in high school, he's been able to beat people just with his speed. I think that he will be able to do that in the SEC as well. Now, he will have to work on at least one secondary move, but for the most part, James Pierce is beating people with just speed. I actually think that Jordan Ross is a faster player right now than James Pierce is, and I don't think that they're too far off in size. That was one of the things that I love to see from the All-Star games is, man, damn, James Pierce looks like he's close to about 240 pounds already, which means that we will get to see him play a lot as a true freshman. He will get rotated in. I'm not anticipating him to start, but I definitely think that he's going to see a significant amount of playing time 
looking very much forward to seeing what he's going to be doing in fall camp, you know, seeing how his game will translate to the SEC, but I don't think he's going to miss a beat. I don't think that there's going to be any drop off really from high school to college for him. He's just that special of an athlete. And I will continue to say this. I think his ceiling is higher than James Pierce's is. So we have a very bright future on Rocky Top with every single player that we signed in this class. And I just wanted to do the high school guys because there's only 10 slots. You know, if I was to throw in the transfer portal players, they probably would have took up most of this list. So we're going to give our high school guys some love. And again, man, I think that the future is very bright. Tennessee's on the verge of winning a national championship. I believe this season and then next season with what we are anticipating to be a top five 2025 class. I think there's a very good chance that Tennessee could be going back to back. So drop your top 10 players in this class down in the comments section. I think that that make for a great conversation. And as always, thank you for tuning into the channel. Please make sure to like, subscribe, share with your friends, family, and other volunteer fans, and we'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks. Peace.